Hello, I'm Graham Fitch, and I'm bringing you this last video uh, on fingering for Pianist magazine from Steinway Hall in the heart of London. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at hand redistributions. Uh, what does that mean? It means taking notes that were written by the composer from one hand and sticking them in the other hand, swapping around a little bit, taking some notes from here and giving them here. Now, there is a little bit of controversy about this in certain quarters. Some pianists think it's absolutely fine to do that whenever. Um, other pianists think it disturbs the gesture that the composer is after, particularly, let's say, in, in late Beethoven, where we feel an element of struggle. Um, to make something simple uh, takes away that element of struggle and therefore diminishes the music. So you basically, you've got to decide based on you know, what you feel is right and wrong, um, and also on the circumstance. So I'm going to show you now the famous C-sharp minor Rachmaninoff prelude. In the original version, I'm going to play just a, the opening. Count this, two, three, four. Now, he wrote it with a big spread in each hand. When I say a big spread, I mean a big stretched out hand. Do you see how that works? The thumbs interlock, sometimes they interlock this way, other times they interlock that way. And that just feels really nice and, uh, and generous. It's like I'm giving the piano a blessing. It, it feels really good. It's, it's, it gives a sense of spaciousness. Um, however, if you've got a small hand, there's nothing intrinsically wrong. Instead of doing this, of, of switching the thumbs around so that I'm playing Instead of an octave with a note in the middle, I'm playing just a sixth with a note in the middle. Now, I don't like the feeling of this because it feels a little bit kind of, I don't know. Um, mean. <laughs> but if, if one had a small hand, it's certainly viable. If you think about how uh, Schumann wrote the beginning of Troimerei, similar with, with a big open, a uh, sixth in the left hand and a fifth in the right hand. You could easily take that uh, with a third in the right hand and a fourth in the left hand. So you have this. Instead of... No, I prefer that because it just feels more warm and generous. But it's just a, it's just a feeling. Um, let's look at the Chopin C-sharp minor nocturne opus 27 number 1 the beautiful bleak opening, uh, which for me, it's like being in a, in a very cold place. What's a cold desert? Uh, it's a contradiction, isn't it? Some, some vast open space that's really cold and bleak. And the stretches, the, the big spans in the left hand reflect that spaciousness. Lonely right hand. Now look, I do allow myself to take very discreetly and surreptitiously, uh, slyly, take this E here with my right hand, since my right hand is actually there, because it enables me to do more smooth movements in the left hand. However, I certainly would not do that at the beginning. Too easy. It doesn't, it doesn't give me the character of this openness. So sometimes we have to really think, what, by doing this, am I disturbing the gesture or the meaning of the music? And I think one certainly would be if you did that at the beginning here. But the odd, you know, discreet uh, note taken with the, with the right hand is absolutely fine. Later in the nocturne, we have this cadenza written for the left hand. I can't resist adding an octave to that when it comes back. And then I don't have to change my pedal for a long time. I don't even change it here. 
I feel like I need to change it only there. So I just trap the, the bass. That's slightly naughty, really. But um, I have seen people do this. They've just decided, right, well, the right hand's doing nothing in this place. So why don't I just go ahead and do this? It just, it, it just disturbs for me, it just disturbs the rhetoric, the grand gesture of the left hand playing the octaves. So I would absolutely then not redistribute that. I'm coming now to a very famous uh, piano sonata by Beethoven, the Hammerklavier, which begins with one of the most treacherous jumps um, in the history of treacherous jumps at the keyboard. Beethoven's expecting the player to go from a bass B flat to a, a chord in the tenor, and then to do it again. Fortissimo, now if you should miss it in a performance, not only will it create the most appalling uh, clash, horrible um, problems also with, with one's confidence. How can you recover from that? So a lot of people do cheat uh, by playing either the second chord with the, with the right hand, which is unemployed at that moment. Here too. Or, and I think this is actually the, the less good one, going over. So if you were making a recording, I think probably sensible to do it the uh, rearranged, the redistributed way. But if, in a live performance, the heroic, the heroic act of jumping from here to here and then from there to there is actually more in the spirit of the music. I'm going to show you now just a, a very beautiful ending, well, near the end, bar 48 of Debussy's Prelude from Book One, Voile, which I think is absolutely cries out to be redistributed. Let me just show you, I'll just do it slow motion just to walk you through it. I've got here a pedal that actually goes all the way through. Don't change the pedal here. Crossing over with my left hand. See how that works, actually, that should have been with my right hand. The alternative, and I have seen this in a very reputable Urtext edition, which I won't name, um, the editor expects this all to be played by the right hand and the left hand somehow has to manage all of that, um, which makes it extremely difficult to bring off. So let me just show you again what I do. I'll start from the, the bar where the right hand has the theme. So right hand, cross over, uncross, cross over, now right hand, cross, and it works a treat. I'm just going to show you now one final redistribution that I think is genius. Um, it's from Schumann's magnificent F sharp minor sonata, which I just love to play. And it's a spot in the, in the last movement, which when I first learned it, I did it as Schumann said on the page, which is, let me just show you, I'll just break it up for you a bit. The right hand's doing this. Broken up chords. terribly difficult by itself. The left hand is doing this, just crotchet chords. Look how generous that is. Magnificent spacing between the, the bass and the middle element. Now, that's fair enough when you're playing it separate hands, but when you put it together, see, this is the problem. You've got one hand getting in the other hand's way. I played it that way for a probably a few years before I picked up the Harold Bauer Shermer edition. Harold Bauer is a great uh, figure. Um, in fact, I used to have my lessons at the Manhattan School of Music in Harold Bauer's studio. <laughs> so sort of special meaning for me. But his Shermer editions of Schumann are really good. He comes up with this solution, which when I first tried it, thought, wow, why didn't I think of it? He redistributes in this way. <laughs> Thank you.
so that what happens is the right hand takes the first of the ta 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 cells and then the left hand and that's what's in my body now I play that way and it just feels uh, wonderful but I don't think I would have necessarily have thought of well I didn't think of it until I picked up that edition so when you are looking at editions Go with an Urtext edition as your primary working copy, but do consult other editions. Uh, you can look on the Petrucci Library online. Uh, you will find probably, I don't know how many of this uh, particular sonata there are, but if you look at, say, Beethoven sonatas, you probably find 10, 12 different editions with different fingerings. When you are consulting these editions, try out this fingering, try out that fingering, um, if there are redistributions suggested like Bowers, try them out, see if they work for you, and then you will have um, your own uh, solution to fingering redistributions that work for you. It might not necessarily work for the next person, but they will work for you. So I hope that's given you a few ideas, and happy practicing. <laughs>